in the next about 10 minutes, I would like to discuss, I would like to zoom in on the potential role of the PKPD optimized approach to combat antimicrobial resistance. Now, essentially, there's two main topics I would like to discuss today, and this is on the one hand, treating antimicrobial resistant infections using the PKPD optimized approach, as well as preventing them. These are my disclosures, none of them, in fact, uh, relevant for this particular presentation. This uh, short overview is actually a summary of what, uh, together with Sophie Daz and Irina Bulens uh, from our hospital, we wrote on this uh, in the uh, one of the latest edition of the uh, journal. So for more information, please dig in. I'll give you the link in a, a minute. Now, it goes without saying, of course, that antimicrobial resistance is an important uh, problem, not only in the ICU, much broader, but specifically in the ICU, of course. It is estimated these data um, come from Europe, and it is estimated that about uh, 33,000 patients a year die of antimicrobial resistance infections. And as you can see here at the bottom, it is, um, it is clear that a lot of these infections actually um, develop uh, in the ICU. 75% uh, of these infections are estimated to uh, be healthcare associated infections. And over time, the burden of these infections has significantly increased. You can see the data there, five times, four times increase in different uh, pathogens when it comes to mortality. So an important problem, not only in Europe, but of course also global. So this is why um, it is uh, worth trying all ways to kind of prevent and treat these uh, pathogens. And in the past uh, years, there's been an increased interest in using the PKPD approach uh, when it comes to antimicrobials. So it's about integrating pharmacokinetics, how the drug behaves in the body, and the pharmacodynamics, how this drug has its activity, namely uh, killing of the pathogen, how to both integrate these and optimize the strategies in terms of dosing administration. And this is a figure that you probably have seen before, distinguishing between drugs that are concentration dependent, where you want a high concentration for the effect, and others like the beta lactams that are time dependent, where you need a prolonged uh, exposure. Now, so far, we've mainly been focusing on the um, treatments uh, when we discuss uh, this. But I'll show you in a minute that also for prevention of antimicrobial resistance, this has absolutely value. Now, we have identified different PKPD indices. Um, I've shown you them in the figure before, but the AUC over the MIC, the time above the MIC, the maximal concentration over the MIC, depending on the drug that you uh, are, uh, are using. Um, so typically, again, we use them for efficacy, we use them for treatment, but also to avoid resistance. Yes, these can be uh, used. Mainly, this has been studied in animal models and in vitro models. Uh, and I'll show you now some data from an in vitro model using a hollow fiber model where you can actually mimic an infection, not for 24 hours, but for longer days and look at how the pathogens behave when different concentrations of antimicrobials are uh, there. And this specific situation, this is in a, in a model where uh, Pseudomonas aeruginosa was used and looking at different the doses uh, that were uh, administered in this, uh, in this model, you can see, and let me, bring on the laser pointer, you can see on the left-hand side that over the so five days, 120 hours, in green, you see the pathogens, the susceptible pathogens that actually, um, uh, the total pathogens, pathogens that increase, but the red dots are the occurrence of uh, resistance pathogens. And you can see that with low doses, after a few days, these resistant pathogens, uh, they uh, develop and they take over uh, most much of the infection. Whereas in higher doses, like 17 grams, which you can see here, uh, you see a bit of resistance developing, but it never gets as uh, big as uh, with the uh, lower dosing. So using different dosing and the same has been done for uh, dosing strategies, you can actually try to prevent antimicrobial resistance uh, the developing. So it's, it seems to be this dose dependent suppression of uh, resistance. So this is why, depending on what strategy you want to do, uh, the, what goal you want to reach, whether you want to just for short-term reduction of the uh, number of pathogens, yes, indeed, these more conservative low targets, such as 40 to 70% of the time or above the MIC are enough. 
whereas for a prolonged suppression of resistance development, you need higher targets. So that's a very important thing to consider for suppression of resistance. Uh, it is possible using a PKB, PKPD optimized approach, but higher targets are necessary. And this figure exactly shows you this in a different uh, way. Uh, below a certain concentration, there is no selection pressure. Uh, and this is typically the uh, MIC. That's what we aim for. And above this window, there is this zone called the mutant selection window in which there is suppression of the, um, the, the majority of the uh, pathogens, but you allow resistance developing. It's only when you get your drug to the mutant prevention concentration that both susceptible and these mutant strains are effectively uh, inhibit, uh, inhibited. So this is why, yep, maybe we should be focusing on the mutant prevention concentration more than on the MIC. Well, we do if you want to prevent antimicrobial resistance uh, from uh, developing. Is prolonged infusion the strategy we often use now in clinical practice to optimize antimicrobial exposure for treatment? Is this also possible for suppress suppressing antimicrobial resistance? The answer is yes, probably. But again, you will have to aim higher and try to get 100% of the time above the MPC, not the MIC, to get suppression of uh, resistance. Um, of course, if you are stuck in this window, and this is an inherent risk, then you may actually allow uh, mutants to be, uh, to be selected. So, so much for preventing antimicrobial resistance. The concepts that we've, that we've learned in the past years to optimize treatment can actually also um, apply to optimize uh, the, the, to prevent the development of uh, resistance. And I'm sure we'll learn more of this in the uh, future. So on the other hand, uh, PKPD can also be used to treat antimicrobial resistant infections, so less susceptible, borderline resistant uh, infections. This is specifically based, of course, on the uh, MIC. This becomes a very important uh, um, value uh, in this. On average, we will have to aim higher and probably optimize administration as well. And combined with therapeutic drug monitoring, this could be the clue to also treat these uh, resistant infections with um, uh, uh, antibiotics that we use uh, a lot. Synergism is another aspect, another dimension of PKPD optimized therapy, where you actually use two drugs, not one. Uh, and uh, together, these drugs have a higher effect um, than when you would give them uh, uh, separately. This is just one uh, example, uh, in fact, from the Erasmus Hospital in Brussels, published already a few years ago, but still showing you nicely the potential of this. This was a patient who was treated um, for an infection with an extensive drug-resistant Pseudomonas aeruginosa. And over time, this covers three weeks, as you can see, over time, this patient initially had a, a developed a septic shock but as the MIC that you can see here at the bottom line increased from two to eight in the pseudomonas, different strategies going from one gram over two gram every eight hours up to three gram every six hours, an extended infusion was used to, um, to optimize the um, uh, therapy. So in the end, 12 grams in optimized perfusion was used. Of course, now you may have other drugs at your uh, other drugs that are available, but this clearly shows you that there is a potential for this uh, uh, approach. And also in the latest guidelines, this comes from the uh, one of the latest CMI um, uh, articles, the guidelines on the treatment of multi-drug resistant uh, gram negatives. Also there, these optimal, optimized dosing, optimized administration by pathogen and indication, of course, combined with TDM was considered to be a, a good uh, clinical practice. Um, so definitely something to consider. What does the future look like? Well, um, I think we need more research into what concentrations we need to avoid selection of resistance, not only looking at in vitro uh, models, but of course also real world situations with real world inocula and a not 24, but four to seven days uh, treatment. Now, overall, of course, higher concentrations, higher doses will be uh, necessary. And in a recent article, we elaborated on the concept of a maximum tolerable dose, you know, dosing higher up to the level that um, the patient uh, develops. The big problem, the big uncertainty here is that we're not sure about what concentrations are 
um, effectively uh, toxic uh, for our uh, patients. So again, if you want to read more about this, this is a, a QR code that will get you directly uh, to this, um, uh, to this uh, article. And in conclusion, uh, Mr. Chairman, these PKBD principles that we learned a lot about uh, in order to optimize the treatment of infections does also have value in uh, avoiding resistance uh, development. So definitely something that we need to um, study much uh, more. We don't know, however, what concentrations of a drug in the plasma, in the tissue, we need to avoid this uh, resistance development. Could also here, as in treatment of pathogens, prolonged infusion be a solution? I think it could be part of the solution, but again, not the only thing, combined with higher dosing, optimized use of therapeutic drug monitoring, and potentially also combination therapy. This is what uh, the future could uh, uh, look like. Now, in any situation, uh, the basics, the principles of antimicrobial stewardship, they also apply when we try to, um, to prevent antimicrobial resistance as much as when we want to treat antimicrobial uh, pathogens. And with this, I would like to end and, uh, of course, look forward to uh, discussing this.